Hey guys, Matt here with Ortho Sport HQ, and I'm coming at you with another video talking about Baker Mayfield, the quarterback of the Browns, and his left shoulder labrum injury. So, what is the labrum? The labrum is a fibrocartilaginous ring on the glenoid of the shoulder here. So, imagine this is my glenoid here. The arm bone, also known as humerus, forms a ball, and that sits in that socket there, aka the glenoid and that labrum is around that glenoid there. So what does the labrum do? It acts to deepen the socket. So it's forming more surface area around that ball there. It also helps the body to know when the arm bone is at risk of dislocation or when the labrum is at risk of disassociation from the glenoid. So how do we injure it? Well, we injure it through involuntarily subluxating or dislocating the shoulder. If the force is too great or the velocity of the movement is too quick and the body will not have enough time to respond and then we'll see either a dislocation or subluxation. The pattern that we see most dislocations happen is adduction, which is this, and external rotation of the shoulder. In that position, that puts a lot of stress in the front or anterior part of the shoulder, making it more prone to dislocate or sublux. Week five is most likely when Baker Mayfield fully tore his labrum. If you can remember, J.J. Watt tackled him and Baker's arm on the ground went into that adducted and external rotated position. So how do we know if we have a uh, torn labrum? That's gonna be through diagnostic imaging here. MRI is most commonly used as it detects bone, cartilage, and soft tissue. X-rays will not be as helpful. If you believe you have suffered a labral tear, you should seek the advice of a musculoskeletal specialist. To treat labral tears, we can do it both non-operatively and operatively. Non-operatively will consist of active, progressive physical therapy to restore strength and mobility around the shoulder and increase proprioception. Massage and chiropractic therapy can also be used to address pain but will not likely reduce the likelihood of um, stopping shoulder dislocations from occurring. Treating a labral tear operatively will consist of surgical procedures to restore stability of the shoulder. The most common procedure done for um, labral tears is an anterior stabilization. Depending on your surgeon, recovery will likely last four to six months. The first three to six weeks after surgery will be a period of immobilization in an arm sling to allow healing. After that, physical therapy will then be used to restore range of motion and build strength and stability around the joint. That will likely last eight to 18 weeks. Redislocation rate without surgical procedure is close to 100%. After shoulder stabilization, redislocation rate goes down to around 25%. Along with the labral tear, we also know that Baker Mayfield had suffered a tuberosity fracture of the humerus. The tuberosity is an insertion point for a lot of the rotator cuff muscles. Thankfully, the injuries are not severe enough to keep Mayfield out of the game as we've seen him play in week seven against the Steelers. But with that being said, the longer Mayfield waits to treat that shoulder operatively, the more harm he could be doing to it. We know that Baker is working with a physiotherapist and treatment will likely consist of pain control, strengthening muscles with isometrics, range of motion in pain-free positions, and reducing inflammation.